there everybody and welcome to this episode of Gears TV. On today's episode of Gears TV, we're bringing you the rock stomping, crack hopping, Minimus 1010V2 from New Balance. Now the V2 and the 1010V2 stands for version 2. Clever, no? And this is a great follow-up to the first iteration of the shoe, which was really, really very, very popular. So let's see what this shoe has to offer. The 1010V2 has a Vibram outsole. That's right, Vibram. Vibram? Is it which way is upright? You know. Vibram. So Vibram means pretty much tough as nails in the shoe sole game industry. Now, this is great for a shoe that's going to be put to the test on a variety of terrains, so it's really, really nice that they teamed up with Vibram for this. The lugs on the outsole, instead of being a general lug pattern all over the bottom of the shoe, they're divided into pods that are either three or four lugs depending on where they fall on the shoe. And I'll hold it up to the camera a little bit so you can see it there. As you get toward the front and toward the back of the shoe, the angles of the lugs become a little bit more severe. We'll see if this works in the camera. As you can see toward the back, they're quite tilted. As you get toward the middle right there, they're pretty much just straight down. What this does is it provides a great amount of grip when you're going uphill, so those angles are much sharper, and a lot of grip when descending in toward the back of the shoe. The lugs in the center provide a lot of grip, but they're primarily meant for just compressive force straight down into the ground. Another cool part of the outsole that kind of props up the minimus or the kind of really flexible and minimalist feel that you want in this shoe is the fact that each of these lug pods that I mentioned are joined by kind of a network of rubber that just kind of goes in between and connects them. What this does is it means that there's not a large sheet of rubber with the lug sitting on top of them that's overlaying the entire outsole and thus adds more flexibility to the shoe. This certainly passed the can I fold this shoe in half test which is actually really good and I think that a portion of that is largely due to the outsole and you can see here we can fold it in half pretty much anywhere that we want to, including in the heel there, so that's actually really nice. In other reviews here on Gearish, you may have seen that we, we like to take shoes, regardless of if it's a road shoe or a, a trail shoe, we like to take them on a variety of surfaces from road to hard pack to technical trail. Now, this shoe, as soon as I got it on the road, I have to say that the grippiness of it really, really just made me want to get onto a trail as soon as possible. It ran fine on the road, I have no qualms about it, I just didn't give it enough time to really, really see how it would do on the road. But I guess the fact that I don't really have an opinion one way or another speaks to the fact that it just kind of does well. Once I hit the trail, what I was really looking for in a shoe that is named Minimus uh, is, is this shoe gripping where my foot would be gripping if I were running barefoot on that kind of trail. Now, I personally would never run barefoot on that type of trail because the trail that I was on is very, very rocky. Lots of baby heads, lots of crags, lots of things sticking up that can break some ankles. Um, so what I was looking for is, does this hit the places that I would? Is it hitting on the lateral side of the foot properly? Is it hitting under the first metatarsal or right under the forefront of the heel on descent? And I actually felt those really, really nicely. Uh, there wasn't a ton that left me wanting. I mean, it was just a really, really grippy shoe. I really, really think that this outsole is is just really spectacularly built. Um, I don't mean to, to gloss over the whole thing, but there was just nothing to complain about on the outsole. I have seen some people mention that they wish there were some support under the medial arch here, under the navicular, even though the navicular, a bone that sits kind of at the top of the arch of the foot, the top of the instep, doesn't actually hit the ground. If you do have a let's say flatter foot or a flexible arch, which I'm assuming means a flat foot, then this would probably not provide um, all the support you're looking for on the medial side. So just be aware of that. Now let's talk about the midsole. The 1010 V2 rocks a four millimeter drop. It's got a 24 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 20 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. The midsole is made up of New Balance's RevLite foam that sits in the midsole there. It's supposedly 30% lighter than other comparable foams without sacrificing all the, the resilience and the energy return that you might feel from those other foams as well. The midsole, as you can see here from a top view, really extends nicely beyond the profile of the shoe, which is really nice. It gives you a really, really wide base. The outsole, as you can see here, 
goes all the way to the edges of that midsole, but it gives you a really, really wide base and it really feels very, very stable when you're doing any lateral movement. It's very, very nice that way. And that extends in the forefoot, both the heel and the forefoot, but primarily the biggest spot you're gonna notice that is on the lateral forefoot, which if you're cutting side to side, that's where you're gonna be putting the weight. So if you're cutting right, you're gonna be pushing off of that left foot quite a bit, and you're gonna need that additional lateral stability on the outer side of the left foot. This shoe also has the New Balance Rock Stop Rock Plate. You can see here it's a TPU plate. Now, what that's meant to do is if you're on sharper rocks and things like this that you want to protect from really digging into your foot in a more, in any kind of shoe, much less a more minimal type shoe, uh, that I was kind of afraid was going to sacrifice flexibility. But again, as you can see here, it really doesn't. It does not compromise the flexibility of this shoe, which is really, really surprising and very nice as well. Also, because of its low stack heights and the fact that there's no removable sock liner that you can see in there, uh, this shoe really does have excellent ground feel. It feels like you're just very connected to the ground from the get-go. There's not a lot of rocker in any direction, so you feel really connected to the ground from the time you get into it, which I would expect from any shoe that calls itself Minimus. Let's talk about the upper now. In the 1010 version one, some people did have some durability issues. Now, in 1010 V2, New Balance seems to have addressed that. They've replaced whatever mesh was in the first version of the shoe with a synthetic ripstop nylon mesh. It's actually really, really nice for shedding fine debris. I was kind of surprised by that. A lot of, a lot of shoes, trail or otherwise, tend to have a very open mesh. If it's got an open mesh on top with a mesh backing, you're still gonna have a lot of debris that can fall down into that. In this case, all that protection falls on the outside with this ripstop mesh. It is backed with a light, light mesh, but it's, it's just very, very minimal. All the strapping and the support structure of this shoe is heat bonded material, as you can see here. There are no stitching. And on the inside, it's a no sew upper. This is gonna mean that if you want to take this onto the trail and have no socks on, be my guest, uh, this is gonna be something that you should not have a problem with. Again, I can't attest to the sensitivity of individuals' feet, but when I wore barefoot, I had no problems at all. I just prefer the feel of socks, so that's generally the way that I ran in it. Another nice feature of the upper is the toe cap. Now, the toe cap is a nice rubber on this, and it really does provide a pretty decent amount of protection. Now, if you're going full speed like a six minute mile and you kick a rock, you're gonna feel it, but short of wearing steel-toed combat boots, I'm pretty sure you're gonna feel that no matter what you're wearing. Now let's talk about the fit of the shoe. I wear a size 11 and this was spot on. You'll notice that there is plenty of room in the upper, vertically speaking, and there's a very wide profile to the shoe, which I like. It allows the foot to spread naturally. It's also trying to find a more natural last, okay? Uh, there could be a tiny bit more room allowed on the lateral forefoot or lateral toe box area, but it's really nothing that affected me and I have pretty traditional Western looking feet. If you have a lower volume foot, as you may find yourself slipping around a little bit and you may have to tighten down the laces more than you want to. Now, according to New Balance's website, the Minimus 1010 V2, this shoe right here is a trail running shoe for athletes looking for a minimalist experience with a slightly more traditional underfoot feel. No offense to New Balance, I have to disagree with that quite a bit. Um, a traditional underfoot feel, to my mind, and to my opinion, and to my experience, means that there's a ton of cushion. And not only that, but there's thick stack heights that are going to deaden your ground feel. I really, really didn't feel like that. I may be able to see what they mean because it is a wider base. It's, it's, there's a little bit more foam than in the Minimus Road models, but I really didn't feel like it was a more traditional underfoot feel. This shoe is great on uphills and downhills, great on side to side lateral movement. It really, really responds very well. I will say that the detractor, and I, I do hesitate to call it a detractor, but the kind of detractor that I noticed is that you can maybe have a false sense of confidence. I found myself being in the shoe and feeling that it was so grippy and just gonna respond to whatever I wanted to that I took some risks that like going off a jump or a drop or something like that that I might not have wanted to take otherwise. The shoe is also light, so the ride is really, really responsive and close to the foot. I felt like this was a part of my foot instead of wearing something that was on my foot. This was nice and made it able to, to be a speed shoe. If I wanted to do a fart lick or something like that on the trail, I was able to do that and it certainly was peppy enough and not beefy and holding me back. 
coming in at 8.3 ounces, it's certainly, certainly light enough to do that. The protection that the New Balance Minimus 1010 V2 offers and the ride that it offers is really, really great, especially for a shoe that's meant to be a minimalist shoe. The grip on the shoe and the added durability of the Vibram outsole and the nylon ripstop mesh upper, that kind of durability is gonna make $110 a really, really palatable price, especially on a price per mile basis. This is a really well-rounded shoe that I think a lot of people are gonna be able to enjoy. This shoe is a really solid contender. It's currently probably my favorite trail running shoe and I've got a lot of trail running shoes that offer a lot of amazing features. This one just seems to have hit the nail on the head. I strongly recommend you guys going out and checking out the shoe. Again, it's the Minimus 1010 V2 by New Balance. Go and check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Gearist TV. Please click on over to Gearist.com when you have a second. Take a look around. Do the little ratings up there. Let us know what you think of the site. If you have any questions or comments, click on that Contact Us link right there. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, in just one second, you're going to see the big blue subscribe button on this channel. Please click on it. We'd love for you guys to get video updates as soon as they come out. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Gears TV. Get out there, get moving, and we'll see you next time. As always, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Gears TV. Please click on over to find us at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And while you're here, please click on that beautiful blue subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.